Hello and welcome back to Wall Street Training's Mergers and Acquisitions Deal Structuring Course. In this third and final section, we will look at some basic number crunching, specifically our accretion dilution analysis. And then in our merger modeling module to follow this, you will actually build it in Excel as well as combining two other income statements as well as an ability to so pay That's analysis. how these numbers are calculated. If you need to, feel free at this point to pause the video and rewind to get a full explanation again of how these numbers were derived. If you're all set and you got it clear, then why don't we move ahead to the next slide and take a look at some of the implications. Okay, this next slide is the exact same thing as the previous slide except for a few changes. The inputs have stayed the same, but we've changed the deal structure. The deal structure is now 0% synergies, 100% stock, no good amortization, no 330H10. We are trying to capture a true clean numbers. 100% stock, no synergies. Now, the question is as follows. How is it that at exactly 3511.9, this deal provides you with zero accretion. What I want you to do is spend a few minutes or seconds, pause this video at this point, spend a little bit of time to think about and look at the numbers on this column that is highlighted, and tell me why at exactly 3511.9, you have zero accretion dilution under a 100% stock deal with no synergies and nothing else affecting the model. The cleanest, most base case accretion dilution, you will have zero accretion dilution. And more importantly, how could you have told or discovered that this was the correct zero accretion dilution number without running through the entire analysis? Okay, here's the analysis. It just so happens that at exactly 3511.9, the implied P-E ratio that you're paying is 22 times. How is this calculated? Several ways. They take the purchase price divided by the current equity value, sorry, divided by the net income of the target, or you could have taken your purchase price divided by shares outstanding, that gets you your price per share, divided by your EPS. This will be slightly different numbers due to options. But in any case here, at 3511.9, that is a 22 times PE, giving you no accretion dilution. The question really becomes, so what? Well, that is exactly the same PE ratio as the acquirer, the same. So why is it, therefore, that this works? At the end of the day, people, all this means is that M&A deals are strictly a P.E. game. Meaning what? Here's your assessment. Here's how you analyze this. What's a P.E. ratio? It's price over earnings. It's the value of one dollar of earnings. So if I have a dollar of earnings and I can buy or it's worth 22 times, $22, what that means is from a separate angle, I can buy $22 worth of goods from my $1 of earnings. If I am using my dollar of EPS to buy $22 worth of stuff and that $22 worth of stuff also has a value of 22 times, I don't make out in either way. Again. My dollar of earnings is equivalent to $22 worth of value. If I buy your dollar of earnings, which happens to also be worth $22, I gain nothing, I lose nothing. What does this mean? What if now I were to buy a stock at a 22 times? Remember, me, I'm at 22. I buy a company Who's at 20 times? What does this mean? Your observation is that my dollar of earnings per share 
buys more than the target's dollar. Remember, if we're both at 22 times, I don't gain because my share is equivalent to your share, one for one. But if my P is 22 and I'm buying your dollar of share of earnings and you're at 20, I'm going to gain. Why is that? Because I now only need to give you, or rather, my one share, my one share effectively can buy 1.1 of the target's shares. Again, my one share can buy 1.1 because my 22 times worth of value, I can now take the 22 times, or said another way, take the inverse, let's say it's 0.9, whatever the case is, I only need to give up 0.9 shares of mine to get your one share. Therefore, at 22 times, same PE, no gain, no loss. Break even. If you're at a higher PE ratio than me, let's say you're not at 20 times. Let's say you're at 30 times. As you can now guess, I will be dilutive, everything else constant, nothing else in the picture. Why will I be dilutive? Because I need a lot more than one share to get your shares, but I'm still getting only a dollar, so I got to give up more. And therefore, I'll be dilutive in that case. What I want to do now is hone in this concept we just went over with the next and last slide when we look at the same deal but with 100% stock, sorry, 100% cash instead of 100% stock. Let's now flip to the next slide. Same thing, except it's 100% cash. No synergies, no goodwill, amortization, no 338, 100% cash, no synergies. And therefore, it just so happens that at exactly 3804.1, whatever that number is, I am at exactly zero accretion dilution. How? This is 